Hey. Welcome to Raising Hell. To heaven. <laughs> so I look like the morning after. I look like the walk of shame, except for who would think? I haven't done that in a very long time. <laughs> it's just not our best day. Let's put it that way. But you know what? We're showing up. Anyway. We're showing up because that is the theme of the year. Um, is just show up and just let the rest up. pieces fall where they may. Um, pavement special. I'm going to use that. That's here. Yeah. That's here. Okay. It's a dog. Who mm -hmm. is okay. So dog one of the questions we got, what? <laughs> <laughs> I'm dead. Let's just go to our questions. You shoot, shoot them at me. Okay. I'm ready. So one of the questions we got is, um, for masculine men, are there feminine characteristics needed? For masculine men, are there traits that women want out of me? Which is an interesting way to put it. Basically, I feel like a lot of guys are like, well, you want feminine, you want me to do feminine things. That's not, it's a weird way of looking at it. Um, I think that this whole masculine, feminine, like gender role thing that's going on, what's really happening is we're just saying like, to tap into your feminine just means to, and it's good for men also. This isn't something that that society or the healthier new way of thinking people are just saying for the benefit of women. It's also for the benefit of men that we're fighting the toxic masculinity because toxic masculinity is telling them you're not allowed to have feelings because you're, you're a man. You need to be a man and man up. So... It's not that we're wanting something out of you. It's that we're wanting you to allow yourself to give yourself permission to feel because the whole time that the, this last hundreds of years, our society has been telling you that you're a man. So you're not allowed to feel, and that's a lie. Um, mm -hmm. So that's kind of my short, sweet take on it. Okay. What are your thoughts? Um, no, I think, I think that's great. I think it is permission to feel, but I also, I feel like if, as soon as you need somebody else to tell you how to be, that's a, a beautiful, beautiful flag in the sky saying stop and and look within because you need to be good with you. I think it yeah. goes without yeah. saying. We discussed this a little bit last week, but the idea of the masculine is the head of the household. And I realize in this day and age, there's been many attacks on the masculine um, so a lot of men are not, I mean, they're kind of being shut down and, and not really allowed to take that role. Um, but I think it goes without saying that you've, you've got to look within, you've got to look within. And this is what I say to my clients, you have to be good with you. And if you're good with you and you're good with God, then something new is going to come out of you. Then that doubt that you feel like, Oh, well, what do you, yeah. what do you need me to be for you? That that question is going to go away. It's going to become, this is who I am. This is yeah. how I'm showing yeah. up. I've integrated my past, my shadow. I'm not a perfect person, but I'm here to improve and I'm here to bring my masculinity, my gifts, my medicine. Cause everybody's got yeah. medicine to yeah. bring and to give. I'm here to bring this to the world, you know? stepping yeah. into your frame yeah. and being that person rather than looking for from outside or expecting somebody else to tell you how to be does that answer your question yeah. <laughs> i think that's a great answer i think that's a great answer um what do you think is the equivalent so for me i believe that um in order for a woman to step into her feminine energy right she has to be with a man who is in his masculine energy to allow her to um step into that Right. So if he's uh, if she has to pay all the bills and take care of things and make sure everyone is safe and everyone is good. Uh, I've been in relationships right where I was a little bit of the mother uh, and mm. because I was more of a motherly characteristic, I was, you know, telling him what he needs to do, where we need to be, what's going on. I was in control at all times. And he looked to me like, yes, his partner, but really a motherly figure because I had that responsibility on my Mac on my back, 
um, I was in my masculine energy. Um, and I ended up getting cheated on because I think that what happened is that he felt emasculated, right? Because I'm taking care of everything. And so he went to a woman that made him feel better about himself because he didn't feel like a man around me because I was taking care of everything. The irony is that like I was taking every care of everything because that was what was demanded of me because he wasn't going to. Um, so if you want a woman to be step, feel comfortable stepping into her feminine energy, like you have to be in your masculine energy. So my question is, what do you think, Kate, in your opinion, like what does a woman need to do to make a man feel comfortable being in his masculine energy? that is equivalent to like, as a woman, I feel comfortable being in my feminine energy when a man is taking care of things, taking lead, not looking to me like a mother. Mm. So just remember this. And I always, I always like to remember this. We can't make other people feel anything like it's our job to show up. And if, if what we're offering is not received, don't take that upon yourself. That's not on you. Like if, if who you are is not enough for someone also, our egos love to come into play here. And it's like, Oh, I'm not enough. And we take it personally. It's not personal. It's like, you know, I don't like vanilla milkshakes. I prefer chocolate. Yeah. Like that yeah. doesn't mean that I hate vanilla. It doesn't mean that vanilla must die. It just means that's my preference and you're not going to be everybody's preference. Yeah. So I think the way and, and I, I'll just say personally, like how I'm trying to show up is I've, I'm doing a lot of healing on healing my past wounds of like, I'm a child of divorce. So my biggest thing was I carried this idea that I wasn't enough to make my dad stay. And that was the nine year old me, which was not at all. I mean, my parents had a really amicable divorce, so it was nothing to do with that. Like I was quite lucky in that sense, but I never healed that. And it played out in all my relationships. Um, yeah. So I think if I would like to show up as a woman in a relationship in the role of having done that work to heal, I'm a strong woman as well, but I agreed to be led. I agree to be led. Like, that's a big thing. I think it's important to be able to be independent. Like you're showing up as two independent people. So to, mm -hmm. to retain that sense of independence, so it doesn't become codependent, Yeah. but yeah. to allow like my man to be a man, like to take care of things. I in the past have, because I've been scared, had a tendency to become very controlling and I, it's yeah. something that I've also worked on healing. So mm -hmm. I think you've just got to, I don't think that there is a way that one person should show up in a way that another, I think relationships are also individual. So you're going to mirror different things to each other. You are going to bring up what needs healing in both of you. Like when you look in that mirror, when you're looking at the other person, that stuff is going to come up. And I think it's how you communicate yeah. And how you deal with any like unprocessed traumas and stuff when they come up. Mm -hmm. And yeah. communication is so big, right? Like that goes back to like another thing that I think is just a game changer um, is when men learn to feel comfortable communicating because again, it goes back to our society telling them to just bottle up your feelings but then you're not communicating and we don't know what we don't know. So if we don't know that what we did hurt you, or if we don't know that what you, us taking over, you know, we're doing too much. Or if we don't know that that made you feel like we were complaining, when, you know what I mean? Like communication and the way men and women communicate is very different too, right? Where a lot of women just want to be heard and the guy wants to fix it. But once the guy, like we were talking about last week, right? So once you're communicating well, can be like hey do you want me the right. man can be the woman do you want me to fix this problem or did you just want to be heard and the women should be asking the men the same question right do you want me to step in here or do you want me to take you do you want to take the lead on this one because i'm willing to write let you lead um and i think that communicating too 
and words of affirmation are really huge. And I don't think men get compliments enough. That's one thing I noticed that I needed to work on a lot with my pre previous relationships is especially because I had the society telling me like, you don't want to be a simp. You don't want to be obsessed with him. You don't. So I wouldn't give guys compliments because I was like, I don't want to seem like I'm obsessed with them and like this and that. So I realized that like, I just didn't at all, but men need compliments too. You know, like, just like we want to be told we're pretty. They want to be told like, you look good today or you did a really good job on that. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I see, I appreciate you. You showed up for me. Like you're leading really well. Like, you know what I mean? Like words of affirmation and communication is just communication is the answer to everything. Communicate. Like, that's really. just it. That is it. It is communication. And don't be afraid to ask the questions. This is, I was speaking to someone about this today and it's such a beautiful, it's such a beautiful concept because so many people struggle with it. That fear that we sit with. Like if you're in a relationship, maybe you have a fear to be totally honest with someone, um, mm. a fear to be honest about your past, a fear to be honest about anything like a situation or a feeling that you might be having, or maybe you've done something that, you know, it could be kind of shady or you've just messed up, but we have this fear because underneath the fear, so underneath the lie is the fear. And, and that fear is generally like a fear of rejection or a fear of abandonment or a fear of like, if I actually take off this mask and I ask this question and I show up as myself, I'm going to be abandoned because fundamentally I'm not good enough. So I just encourage people to look at that. Like if you feel that there's something that you're not able to say in a relationship and you, 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 you don't feel comfortable to say it, look at why you don't feel comfortable. And it might be that you're just not with the right person. You might person, sorry, person. You might be in an abusive relationship. You you might be, you know, that's that's quite possible. Then you need to yeah. leave. And we know how yeah. hard that is. We know. But if you can't be honest with the person that you're with and you can't communicate openly, then there is something very, very, very wrong. Because that is that is a necessity for a healthy conscious relationship yeah you should be what able you... to communicate what you're feeling in a way where you feel safe yeah feeling yeah. safe is huge is huge for both parties you know like i think girls are more upset are more afraid that the guy's gonna get upset Gr guys are afraid that the girl's gonna like be dramatic or freak out like that's the stigma right um and yeah with the appropriate person <clears throat> you won't have to um, I remember with my ex being just terrified anytime I was going to tell him anything, thinking he was going to get mad at me because that's all I knew previously, not from my father, but from previous partners. And time and time again, I would tell him things and he would be like, why would I get mad at you? And he would re, he had to re show me again and again that I didn't have to be scared. And then finally I realized, you know, but it, we have to definitely like, you can't bottle up. You have to try. And if they do get mad at you and make you not feel safe, like you said, that's a sign that you're not, you're not in a healthy relationship. Um, yeah. and if, if they are, that's a green flag and you are in a healthy relationship. Boom. Comment for more. <laughs> yeah. Send us your questions. Send us your questions. Yes. That's some hard topics. Thanks for watching so <laughs> Yeah, we just had some it was some really light fun ones today. <laughs> so nice and fun. Okay. Next time okay. I will, what did you what did you say? Pavement pavement something? Oh uh pavement special. <laughs> pavement special. Thanks for watching the pavement special. We will see you next time. Subscribe, like below. We love you. Bye. Ciao. Uh, okay.